Baramati, India, a rural farming community six hours drive east of Mumbai and home to an annual conference on the role of technology in global development. I've been invited to speak about education technology in the U.S., but the morning of my presentation, I had an opportunity to go on a field trip first. On the outskirts of Baramati, we arrived at a rural village school. At first glance, the school and its surrounding neighborhood look pretty much like any other in rural India. But every week, the students here get a unique opportunity to use a mobile computer lab that rolls into town on a bus sponsored by the World Bank and the VIIT Technology College. So what you've got is a van in which 22 tin clients have been fitted in. We've got each van with four trained computer teachers. The van leaves VIIT Baramati every day morning 7.30 and has a fixed route, visits a particular school where they cater to students of classes 5, 6 and 7 and we take them through a computer education syllabus very simply put from a level 0 of mousing and keyboarding skills to a comfort level in computers. What uh, we aim to do is in some way bridge the digital divide. The urban kids are going off in a very big way with computers in whatever way. What do they see on the uh, screen? Uh, what they are doing right now is we've done mousing and keyboarding skills with their using simple software like multiplication skills etc. Tell the time software so they have been uh, doing that sort of thing. Now they are into the Microsoft Office products like Word, Excel, PowerPoint etc. Excel will come a little bit later but mainly Word and PowerPoint and they've enjoyed paint. Yes. Do they have to pay for it? Uh, are, this, are the teachers trained too? They are trained too. They have a basic uh, diploma or degree in computer. Plus I mean the teachers from the school? No. The teachers on the van. But the teachers from the school are not trained? No. They are academic subjects. It's our chance to get onto the bus and take a look at the mobile computing lab where a group of 40 students are learning to use PowerPoint. How are you? I'm fine. Good. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> a teacher explains the basics of the software, speaking in the local Marathi language, but using English computer terms. The students are generally grouped in pairs and they all get a chance to use the computer. Much of what we saw though seemed to be the students reciting whatever the teacher was saying rather than using the computer interactively. Nonetheless, the students seemed extremely enthusiastic. It didn't seem to bother them that it was sweltering hot and there wasn't air conditioning. They all took their turns and used the computer, following their teacher's instructions and trying it for themselves. Meanwhile, in the school next to the bus, primary school students get some of their first exposure to computers. It may not be hands-on like the school bus, but at least it's a chance to see how they work. The students in the classroom, as well as on the bus, are already getting inspired by the technology they're experiencing. So, what is your name? Uja. And what do you want to do when you grow up? Teacher. 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 Oh, you want to be a teacher. That's wonderful. What do you want to do when you grow up? Computer teacher. Computer teacher. Unfortunately, not all of the children of the village have the same opportunity to be inspired by technology. Only those children who attend school have the chance to access the computers. Those not in school can only watch from a distance. What is your name? Nice to meet you. My name is Andy. Could you ask them if they use computers on the bus? No, they don't. Thank <laughs> you.
For the children who are enrolled in school, the weekly visits from the cyber bus are proving to be an invaluable experience. As India evolves into a 21st century nation, these students will truly play a leadership role in their country's development. As we return to the conference center, I realize that my session is only a few minutes away. But as I try to prepare for my remarks, I keep thinking back to that school bus with all those children and those computers. Even if I end up giving the perfect speech, perhaps it might have been better if everyone had come here instead and met these children.